about talking and and communication. Um, I was. Let me get closer into the camera. There we go. So as I was saying, I was, I was thinking about communication and how we communicate differently. Some of us communicate verbally best. No, we all, let me put this another way. We all can communicate in the same ways but some of us prefer communication in one form or another. So we have our preferred way of communicating. Like take for instance myself. I can, I can speak verbally very, very well, but when it comes to something deep, something that I have to express. Um, I find writing, it's easy for me. It's something or, you know, recording something rather than seeing the uh, person face to face. I think it's, for me, I think it's about the reaction, you know, especially if what I have to say is very um, hard for me to say and very emotional, um, sometimes it's better for me to uh, write it down or to, um, to express it in writing or express it in uh, it being recorded or record it because it just help, helps me to get it out better. And I was thinking, this is weird. I think about weird things when I'm by myself at night. But I was thinking about um, uh, communication with families and parents and children and sisters and brothers and how we communicate with each other. And um, I was thinking that um, this is just like me talking. Um, I was thinking that um, maybe it's not that we don't communicate well or, or we can't communicate well, but maybe the, the form of commun communication that we're using is not the way the person um, likes, uh, gets the most um, accurate thought, thoughts out. Um, okay, let me put it this way. There was a book a few years ago called The Five Love Languages. And it talked about the way people are express love in five different ways. Physical touch, words of affirmation, um, and they had five, three others, I, I forget. Physical touch, words of affirmation, um, acts of service, and they had two others. I forget what they are now. And in that book, I think it was, um, uh, they said 
we all need love, but we express it differently. And I was thinking of that with communication. We all need to communicate. And maybe it's not the fact that we're not communicating, but maybe it is the fact that uh, we're stronger at co communication in a way that the person that we're communicating with doesn't know, like, is not strong, and maybe that's why we're missing each other. Okay, to tell, to, to kind of illustrate my point more, um, this, I was watching them preaching one day, and they were, they were saying how their kids like to FaceTime them in their own home. And he was like, and this person was like, I don't know why my kids FaceTime me in my own home. And we all laughed. Ha ha. And then I'm kind of uh, a weirdo. So I sit back and think about things. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe that's because, uh, well, I don't know this person, I don't know the family, but I was just thinking in my mind, maybe that's because your kids prefer uh, FaceTiming or video communication uh, uh, rather than face-to-face -face communication. Maybe it is easier for your kids to... Uh, video chat with you rather than face to face talking with you and I and I was thinking I was thinking maybe maybe it's not that we're not communicating but maybe it's because we're just missing each other with communication and I began to think maybe we should ask each other how how best do you like me to communicate with you do you like um, to direct message on social media do you like um, do you like to video chat do you like um, do you like a ver ver um, Verbal communication, maybe you like to communicate using pictures and, and hand signals. Or maybe it's easier for you uh, as a communicator to write stuff down. I believe that we are all, that we are all communicative in some way. But we just need to find each other's communication language. Once we find that, we can communicate with the person uh, in a way that they can receive and understand and, um, and vice versa. They can communicate with us in a way that we, un we, we can receive it and understand it. And sometimes when things are hard for some people um, to communicate, um, sometimes it, it just is not that they don't want to communicate, it's sometimes that they don't know how to communicate um, in that particular thing. Um, so and I, I was thinking, um, I was thinking that um, may, maybe for friends or for family, for couples, maybe it's time that we discover how the person communicates, how the person can really 
begin to share with you because I don't think it's that some people don't talk and some people um, don't have emotions or some people don't communicate. I think that people communicate differently. I think that women and men communicate differently. I think that even in women and men, different women communicate differently. Different men communicate differently. And I think if you find the key to your friend's communication, you will unlock the door to things inside them and yourself that you would not dream, that you would have never dreamed. And um, I just think that um, to sit down and really learn how a person communicates is so vital, especially in a close uh, family situation or a friend situation or a couple situation. Learn how the person communicates and learn how they receive communication because a lot of people are talking but they're not communicating. Talking to me is just words. Communicating is relaying a, a significant message through your words. Talking to me is just saying a bunch of words. Right now, I'm talking. Um, if I say cat, hat, um, bear, care, stare, that's talking. Um, but it's not really relaying any message. But if I say, um, uh, um, if I, if I begin to turn those words into a message, like, the, the cat was bare, and they be, and it began to stare, or something like that, it, that's stupid, but at at least I'm communicating a message um, and not just talking. Um, and sometimes we are talking but not really communicating. We're not really sharing a message. We're, we're talking but the message is not, the message that we're trying to convey is not being shared. Maybe it's not that that person doesn't talk or that person is not emotional, but maybe it's, um, maybe face-to-face uh, -face verbal communication is not the way that they communicate best. It's not the most effective, effective way for them to share their um, thoughts and feelings because everybody has thoughts and feelings, but not everybody communicates them the same way. And there's so many different thoughts and feelings. Um, I always, I always thought it would be cool, um, cause I know traditionally people, I was thinking about preaching, um, because you know, I like preaching and I've been doing it on, on YouTube for 10 years. I've been doing it here uh, since the pan pandemic started and even before that. But I find what's so interesting about preaching is that we, in preaching, we only tackle one form of communication. Like we talk for an hour or uh, we talk for 20 minutes to an hour and expect people to take notes and that's um, what, what we do as preachers. But uh, this may sound crazy, but I was thinking, what if preachers start tackling preaching 
from all different forms of communication. I I was thinking, now this would be a lot of work, and I would do this every, every week uh, when God allows me to open up um, my his, the ministry he's put inside me. I was thinking that it would be so cool to have a visual portion of the sermon for the visual learners and for the visual communicators and to have uh, audio uh, auditory learning um, for the auditory learners, note takers, and to have a tactile portion where people are um, moving around and where they're playing some sort of game all with the same message all to bring in to bring the message home just so that it tackles um so that the so that the word of god gets through on so many levels because there are so many ways to communicate and when you only stand up there and, and preach for um 30 minutes to an hour you're only getting um, a quarter of the con congregation. The audience, the audience, um, uh, the listeners, the note takers, they love service because they get to talk and take notes and listen. But not everybody communicates and learns like that. So the people who are the... Um, the visual learners often in sermons they don't they don't get it they don't get what you're saying it goes right over their head it's not because they don't want to learn it's be, it's not because they're tired it's just because they don't uh, process information that way and forget about the tactile learners that learn and communicate through moving and action and you know all of that they learn best by doing by moving so that so that's why i said a sermon at the ministry that god is going to meet will be one heck of a thing every week because i i want to uh, approach it on three different levels so that people the same message three different ways so that people really lear learn and understand because as a preacher i i'm not here to entertain you i'm here to bring about the word of god in the in a way that he's given it to me so that your life can be enriched um that's what i'm here as a preacher so and i thought that would be cool to to approach a sermon from with three different methods in it every week it's going to be a lot of work for me and the team but it'll all be worth it when lives are changed uh so guys i will see you soon bye The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Thank you.
hundred and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing 